Welcome back to the shop. I'm Tommy, the Angry Craftsman. Uh, earlier today, we got a call uh, to go set up a uh, laser uh, Thunder Nova 35 100. Um, same one we've already installed the air. Uh, we did identify a few problems along the way, but stay tuned and watch how we put it together and test it uh, and get it set in place. This is, uh, at least this is better than ours. Sometimes you got to stretch the hose a little bit. And sometimes you just say screw it and you throw this shit away that comes with it and you go get the foiled or the aluminum dryer vent in six inch. Sometimes it works so much better. Now, it's on there. We don't have an additional uh, hose clamp, so I'm gonna improvise. Not that I believe this tight bastard's ever gonna come off. But you never know. So we improvise and that's taken care of. Okay, so we've come through with the six inch uh, vent and it's just a standard dryer vent. We'll just look at the outside in a bit. Uh, connect your hose, sometimes it can be a pain in the ass, but do the best you can with it. Um, I'm not partial to these because they're a nightmare to put on. So ours at home are replaced with the six inch aluminum dryer vents instead of uh, what comes supplied. Whatever you wanna do is what you need to do. Uh, whatever makes your life easier. From here, this side comes from the laser. I look at the arrows on top to see the flow, and I make sure the arrows are pointed out the door. If not, you're just gonna pull air from outside and push it through your laser. Um, if you choose to say mount this on the wall, we unscrew these, the plate comes off, screw the plate to the wall, and then uh, put this back together. It's relatively straightforward and simple. I'm gonna leave this up here for a few and hopefully my camera woman will walk around so we can see where the plug is. The plug for the fan is going to be the bottom of the three. They're all labeled. Uh, so just know that when you're prepping for this, your power, your air, and your fan are all on the left side where your chiller is gonna be on the right side of the machine if you're facing the back or vice versa. So Thunder does this great. Orange to orange, green to green. Okay, Not see. like the other one where you've got to figure, okay, well, inlet to outlet, outlet to inlet, and do the to do the circuit. So it's it's just as easy. You just slip these on the pieces. So I'm on green. Green goes to green. because that says water in, this says water out. Other ones don't do the color coding mm -hmm. and the color coding makes life so much easier. Okay, so those two are in place. Your chiller alarm. Let me 
so you can figure out which way it goes. It just slips right in and then you tighten the nut up. And it really only goes one way. You have large pins in on one side and small pins in the other side. First things first, you gotta get be smart enough to get it lined up. Okay, now, now we worry about filling it with water. <clears throat> so Find a funnel, pour it in. We're gonna do this mixture at a 50-50, just in case it gets a little cool in here. Now, as you're filling it up, there's a gauge right back here. So you can pay attention to the, or just know it takes about two gallons. Okay, one gallon of that. Now, we go to the distilled water. Tell me it's moving. Oh, that's fine. You must know that you're here. Thunder, can you just send me a email? Don't go too much. You're full. Am I in the full? Well, you're almost at the okay. between normal and full. So what I have a tendency to do is look through the top. I want to make sure I leave enough for air bubbles to escape when we do this. Okay. goes back on computer style plug or whatever that damn thing's called goes there and then for this one you're looking for the notches Big notch and the little notch, and it goes into place. And you twist and it locks. Go. Okay, so minor modifications. Now we've got everything hooked back up. Uh, pay attention to the directions on the uh, air regulator. Ours are set up a little bit different. Uh, so learn something new every day and everybody's human. So this is how we control everything. and then we can still get to uh, the water separators. Okay, so we turned the air on and what we found here is an air leak. Uh, fortunately, we have some of these spare, but we will do the right thing and send Thunder an email, uh, support at thunderlaserusa.com to let them know that this was a, an issue and uh, that way we can get it taken care of. Okay, so that's all it was. Was something went wrong with the little Y splitter. Um, it's always great to have these on hand. So buy a box of them, keep them around with all the other couplings and your six millimeter hose. That way it's a quick and easy fix. But again, um, we'll send an email to Thunder to let them know what was going on with it. There you go. Okay, fresh out of the... Now, when you get your machine and you look inside, 
what you should see is the little Ziploc bag and zip ties. There's zip ties all over the place, so you just need to look for it. And whatever, whatever you need, you want your keys, your gold card, and your thumb drive. I love Thunder for putting this right up front, except for when you're trying to do this straight out of the crate before the driver leaves. A little bit difficult at times, but this is fantastic. Okay. Three go. Okay, we unlock it. Now we want to take a look at the tube. Again, we haven't powered anything on yet. So while we're back here, let's go ahead and remove the cushion and get it to help out of the way. And now I'm looking at the tube. I don't see any visible cracks, but I guess we'll find out here shortly. Now, this is new. Uh, the test cube and the test fire and stuff like that. Ours, this came in the toolbox, not back here hidden in the corner. So we've got the tube taken care of. Uh, we'll come back and look at the tube here in a minute when we plug her in. There you go. Okay, so again, same style. It gets plugged in and twists the lock. You can't pull it out. Now, we need to get her a plate on this one, but 20 amp. See the difference in these two, 20 amp, 15 amp. If your electrician or you didn't put this in, find a new electrician or learn how to do the shit yourself. There you go. Okay, so airline comes from the regulator and just gets plugged in because we're using auxiliary air. Go. Okay, so minor modifications. Now we've got everything hooked back up. Uh, pay attention to the directions on the uh, air regulator. Ours are set up a little bit different. Uh, so learn something new every day and everybody's human. So this is how we control everything. And then we can still get to uh, the water separators. Okay. okay, so we have two switches, the main switch and the laser switch. That turns on the main power. It allows you to move the gantry. The laser switch turns on the chiller and the tube. Your ethernet, USB and uh, PC um, ports. So eventually she will get this hooked up to her computer via ethernet because it's a long stretch. Um, or you can run your USB to it, but she's opting for ethernet. And then when you're done, turn them both off. There you go. Okay, so stand that up. Time to turn it on, let's see what happens. Oh my God, nothing happened. Make sure your emergency stops up. Didn't hear the beeps. So we gotta make sure that our chiller's on. Chiller's on and working. I can hear the air bubbles working its way out. Okay, we see the air bubbles right around in this area here. They will work themselves out. Don't panic, hold your britches on and give it a few minutes. Okay, Thunder sends you uh, a set of Allen wrenches that come in a toolbox. Once you get your machine, you'll never get the door off, no matter how much you try, unless you pull these damn little screws out so that you can open the door. I should say open the front panel. There's one on each. And now your door comes off. 
Now, let's see if it's working. Okay, so I know that the bed's working. I know that the up and down, the manual up and down, and if I can remember how to do this, I come in here and hit menu. The first thing is autofocus, and then I hit enter. And when you get scared, you can hit the button like that and everything will stop. Okay. okay, head and gantry move. Now, if you're worried about the autofocus, you just saw us autofocus. I was goofing around and showing the, the owner of this laser how the e-stop works. Six millimeters is what that is. I get a little bit of play. So what we do is go through the process of measuring and then adjusting the collet right there. But the, auto, the autofocus stops with plenty of room so that you know that you're safe when you're auto focusing with a two inch head. You never auto focus with a four inch head. Only the two. Can you cut with two? Cut yes, you can cut with a two, you can cut with a four. Okay. Um, so for you as the owner, uh, your again, these are your, Z, your stops, your limit switches. It will never go past that. So if you notice on your honeycomb where it is, you're never gonna cut this area here. You're only gonna cut to right there. The same thing applies up front. That's where your cut is gonna stop. About an inch. Give or take. Inside of the honeycomb. Not from this outside edge, but inside. So as long as you, you understand what your limits are, and now all I'm doing is testing to make sure everything works, and then you can generally see now for you, if you want to put marks, you know, black Sharpie marks or whatever, just so you have an idea um, if that matters to you, if not. So now I know all of this works. Okay, so everything's hooked up, our air is good. Uh, when you come over here, you have the air assist controls and you have a test. Okay, I can feel that and then you adjust This is your high ear for cutting, okay? You hear it getting softer, more quiet. You're, you're fine tuning it, keeping that damn thing out of the way. So we're just gonna keep yours all the way open for, air, for, uh, for cutting. Here's your low. We're gonna do the same thing, but first, because I know I'm just gonna cut this all the way down, spin that little lock nut. Hear it? So you'll be able to stick your finger underneath of there and feel it. If you're doing acrylic, you wanna be able to dial this thing down to almost closed. If you're cutting acrylic or engraving acrylic. Um, if you don't like how long they sit on, I think it's somewhere 15 seconds or something is the standard. We can get into the TL timer and I can show you how to adjust that. We can adjust it down to like five seconds after the cut is finished or the engrave is finished and then the air will turn off. Um, so that's taken care of. So now, set to cut. it'll be based on what you have in Lightburn. Okay, so we've got our test material in here. I'm not in focus, so I'm gonna manually focus. I'm gonna turn this knob it's gonna drop down until it touches, and then I'm gonna tighten that knob back up and I'm gonna move that out of the way. Now I'm at the, the six millimeter focal distance for engraving and cutting. This is the two inch lens, so it's six millimeters. Now, once that's done, let's see if it all works. So I'm going to pulse. And I've got this nice pretty little dot right there so I know it works. Oh. Okay, so here real quick, I take two pieces of uh, blue painter's tape. Okay. I, I put it right over here and make sure I got it dimpled down in. 
for me personally, I'm not going to go through. I'm just showing and want to see real quick what the uh, what the focus looks like or the mirror alignment, I should say. So I'm going to pulse. And we'll move it all the way over here. And I can look at the dot and see, okay, well, the red dot's not right on that dot, but the red dot really doesn't matter. It's all about the laser beam where it hits. So we'll take a peek real quick. And I pulse. And I'm gonna verify. Me personally, I do it multiple times because sometimes you'll hold your finger a little too long and it makes the hole a little too big. And it doesn't, to me, doesn't matter which way you do it. You can do it front ways, back ways. Okay, there's my hole. Nice little dot on the far side. Now let's move the head all the way. this and I pulse again real fast and then I move it over here and I can't see but the camera can see we have two dots stacked on top of each other I will call that a win all day long for focus and your mirror alignment don't touch a damn thing <laughs> so straight out of the straight out of the crate haven't done anything you've watched this whole time and we are dead on in alignment so if i know it's all if i know that it's aligned in the front i know it's aligned in the back so quick and easy way to test now you can stick your head in here and you can see the mirrors if you want to see mirror two there's mirror two um, sometimes take an alcohol prep pad and wipe it off. It doesn't look. Stuff that and you have what under says it comes into the toolbox. Not that, that's lubricating oil. So, Thunder sends the lens cleaner and Q tips. So, you can use this, an alcohol prep pad, to clean off your mirrors and your lens. There you go. Okay, so we'll talk about removing the head. These head, you just push down on that ring and pull the uh, air tube up. I twist this knob and I pull it off. It comes out and I can see that the lens, not sure if the camera can pick that up. It's a good lens. It's not loose. It doesn't rattle or shake. So I know that we're good there as well. And then that goes on all the way up. And then that goes back into the spot and then you can adjust there. Um, if you need to do any adjustments for the mirrors, uh, your brass screws and they're on all, all of the mirrors. And here in a moment we'll take and we'll move this out of the way and walk around back and show you where uh, mirror one is, where the red beam it, uh, is. There you go. Okay, so here's mirror one. And then you have your beam combiner, which is right here in the middle. So the, the laser fires, it goes to the beam combiner through it. Through the, it hits the mirror and goes through the hole. Um, so if you ever wanted to adjust your red dot, this is where you adjust your red dot at by adjusting them. I don't recommend you touch it. We've already proven it's good. However, just so you know. Don't fret, you see the pink in the tube? Okay, that's just the RV antifreeze that we put in there, turning the water pink so that you can see, and I don't see any cracks. I see no pink in the outside, it's only on the inside glass tube. I don't see any leaks of antifreeze outside of the glass itself as well, so I'm confident to say there's no issues with your tube. And so right here is your pass-through. Uh, to, to be able to use your pass-through, you have to take all the bolts off and remove this, but you only have a very limited space. 
to slide all the way through. So just keep that in mind. If you ever have to use or want to use your pass through, that has to come off and this is how it comes off. Go. Okay, so to get to your crumb tray, turn your keys and here's your crumb tray. Pulls right out, all brand new, clean and pretty, right? Okay, look right here. There's a magnet. That's your sensor for your door. If this is open, your laser's not gonna work. On the upper blue doors, there's a sensor Once you unscrew everything, there's a sensor on them, specifically on that one over there. You can see it in the back. But the only way to get these out is right here, there's two screws up in the top, you have to use your Allen wrench to, to loosen them up. And then, but if you're never planning on getting into there, that's, you know, typically I would leave them just like they are. Uh, here is your door sensors for here, for the upper door. Meets here. And then again, we've talked about the sensors here and here. That's your bed uh, Z level and your uh, or your end stop for that, along with your uh, autofocus. Well, if you stuck with us this long, we appreciate it. Um, you're welcome to like and subscribe. It's up to you. Doesn't bother me. Uh, I hope you got something out of the the video. Uh, we did find a couple uh, mistakes along the way. We had some hiccups as well with uh, recording. Again, we, this is not what we do for a living uh, as far as the video work. Um, installation, yes. Training, yes. Building and using the lasers, uh, absolutely. Uh, but again, we're all human. We all make mistakes. So again, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you got any comments, questions, uh, feel free and leave them in the, uh, the comment sections. I'll do my best to answer them. Other than that, have a great day.